What is up, Pit fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Stephen Thompson, here with my partner, Dom Campbell. Dom, we are just a couple days removed from the end of the NFL draft. The Panthers had three guys taken in the NFL draft, selected, uh, and then they had a few other guys get invited to some rookie minicamps, sign an undrafted free agent contract. So a pretty successful weekend overall. Let's start with those guys at the top of the draft, or those guys at the top of Pitt's kind of pro prospect board, the guys who got drafted. Matt Gonzalez, uh, Bub Means, and MJ Devonshire. Uh, Gonzalez, a third rounder, Means in the fifth round, and Devonshire in the sixth. Were any of those guys uh, come as surprises to you? Was there anyone, I guess, that you thought maybe should have been drafted and didn't? What did you make of, of Pitt's 2024 draft class? Uh, I think it was pretty much what we expected, Stephen. I mean, all three guys were invited to the NFL Combine. Obviously, Matt Gonzalez did not compete due to an injury, but he did compete at Pitt Pro Day to show what he had to scouts. And, um, yeah, those three guys got drafted. I was a little worried that Devonshire wasn't going to get drafted late there, but, um, yeah, eventually someone picked him. Um, they're all very talented players, uh, all deserving of a draft pick. Um, I guess the only thing that was surprising, well, it wasn't surprising at the time, but initially it was surprising how high Gonsalves went. But when they took seven – with when the NFL teams, at least in the first round, they took seven offensive tackles. I mean, eventually he was going to fall later in the third and fourth round. But, yeah, nice for him to get on uh, day two instead of uh, – late on day three, like a lot of mock drafts had originally predicted for him. So congratulations to him. He'll be going to Indianapolis and uh, a good old friend and a coach Parchers will be right there, obviously on the defensive line. Yeah. Right. A good connection there for him, a familiar face to help him out a little bit. Yeah. I, I think you're spot on. I mean, Matt definitely, I don't, I don't know. I guess he didn't earn himself some money, but other guys earned him some money a little bit uh, by that run of offensive tackles in the first round and, and even the second round as well, just a ton of guys getting picked up, kind of moved him up the draft board a little bit and he gets into a nice situation as well. Um, I, I think you're right. This was a little chalky. I mean, the Steelers or excuse me, not the Steelers, uh, the Panthers, they, all these guys, uh, the top three guys were, were pretty much the entire draft process uh, got drafted. Um, I was a little surprised uh, AJ Woods didn't get picked up. I thought he had great pro day numbers and showed out at some, uh, uh, some of those bowl games, those postseason bowl games that are that end up being scouting, uh, scouting events for for a bunch of NFL teams. Um, and I was also kind of surprised that Means leapfrog Devonshire to a certain extent. I mean, I know Dev Means had like really good pro day numbers, really good combine numbers, but to be honest, I expected Devonshire's tape and then his speed as well to really give him a boost in that area. But he ends up going to sixth round. Means in the fifth. It seems like. Uh, you know, Mel Kuyper was pretty spot on about means. Uh, he was, he kind of ha had him labeled pretty early as an underrated prospect and a guy that uh, was going to make a certain NFL team really happy by being a steal. So, I mean, those were the only ones that really, really shocked me very much. I mean, yeah, I would say like, well, means he had a lucky situation with the Saints because one of the guys in the college's scouting department knew who he was from Louisiana Tech. So, um, mm -hmm doesn't hurt to have people in high places for means, but I mean, eventually someone was going to take him. I mean, he, he has the talent and he has the athleticism that teams want. Although as we saw over the past two seasons, the quarterback play was a bit subpar for the Pitt Panthers. Um, means did play very well when he got a chance to get some solid passes. And we saw that throughout last season and the season before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, there has to have been, I don't know, some conversations during means meeting about like, Hey, don't, don't look at this tape. Look at this tape. This is the stuff that you really got to pay attention to. Um, you know, only three guys taken though. Um, and he, I think you look at Pitt's past couple draft classes and uh, three guys being taken in the, in the draft is a little bit lagging behind what they had become accustomed to for the past couple seasons. Is there anything to really, I don't know, be concerned about? Do you make anything of only three guys going in this class? I mean, it, 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 we talked about it a little bit, but all the guys we thought were going to get drafted got drafted, but, uh, did that? Is there any cause for concern? Are we worried about Pitt's ability to to develop NFL guys after you know a class like this? Maybe a little bit of a smaller one. Well, they did go three nine last year, so I think yeah. that does hurt your chances, especially with a lot of the veteran guys they had who just didn't perform to the abilities they needed to to show that they were NFL talent. The best players from that twenty twenty one ACC championship game had already been drafted. I mean, Eric Hallett, Brandon Hill. I mean, obviously Kalaja Kansi, Sarasi, Dennis. Those guys have been gone, and like. A lot of the guys that st stuck around just well, weren't as good. They weren't playing and they weren't starting for that 2021 team. But now they had the chance to, and they, you know, obviously with a three nine record and just the way things panned out, 
you're going to have to hope that either your athleticism stands out or you're, you have some sort of accolades like Gonsalves and uh, Devonshire had. Otherwise, you know, you're going to get lost in the draft shuffle and you have to hope for to be signed as an undrafted free agent or get a rookie mini camp invite. So I'm not too surprised. I mean, three guys is still okay. I would say for the season they had, those guys deserve to be drafted. The other guys, I don't think they were necessarily NFL draft cal- uh, caliber players to be drafted. Unfortunately, um, the good guys, but just not at that sort of level. There's so many other great players out there. So it's a, it's really competitive. Even in the NFL draft with over 250 picks, it's very competitive. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, there are a couple guys who I think if Pitt had won a few more games, they might have gotten a little bit of a higher profile as undrafted guys. Like, I think Shane Simon is a good example of that. Um, A.J. Woods, uh, I mean, probably would have as well. And I think Marquez Williams is up there, too. But I, I think you're right. I mean, maybe even Sebo, quite honestly. I mean, it, it really just – I don't know. I think if that offense had been a little bit more productive, if there wasn't a rotating cast of offensive linemen, if they're – you know, if that team makes a bowl game, I think, you know – we're, we're having a very different conversation about those fringe guys, you know, those guys who just got invited to rookie mini camps or got invited uh, to, to, um, or signed an undrafted free agent contract. Like, I think there could have been a boost there for them if they got a little bit more exposure or, or something like that. But I think you're right. You know, the kind of high end NFL talent that had won them games in the past was gone already. Um, and so a three and nine record kind of tells you all that you need to know about who was NFL caliber on this team. Um, but, you know, we mentioned some of those undrafted guys, some of those guys who just had to sign, you know, rookie free agent deals or are uh, getting invited to rookie mini camps as well. Um, we're thinking of guys like uh, Jay Cradle, Shane Simon, Tyler Bentley, uh, Malcolm Epps, John Morgan. And I'm going to even throw Keaton Slovis in there as a former pick guy as well, who signed with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, you know, which of these guys do you see any of them having a great chance of, of making an NFL roster, of making an impression on NFL teams uh, or uh, do you think some, most of these guys are, are maybe going to flame out a little bit? I guess AJ Woods and Keaton Slovis who signed uh, undrafted free agent deals, I think would obviously have the best shot. I think that Keaton Slovis, as much as his time in college tended to decline, I mean, his quarterback rating and his completion percentage declined every season he was in, um, he was playing. Um, he still has the int- intangibles. Like he has a talent, he's tall, he can throw a nice ball. He's going to obviously get like practice spots forever. I mean, look at Nathan Peterman. He's still in the league after what do you do with the bills? I mean, he's just going to be a guy that's around. I assume as long as he's not like a, a problem care, problematic character, I can't imagine that Slovis won't be in the NFL for a long time. I mean, again, Simon, uh, Simon might have a shot too. I would say, I think Simon was pretty good last year. Um, but yeah, back to woods. Woods is very talented. Obviously was named uh, one of the more athletic players last season. So seeing him get a chance with the commanders is very good. Um, I guess Jake Cradle as well, I think maybe a little underrated, but he has versatility on the offensive line, which um, I think, you know, helped Matt Gonsalves in terms of being able to play both tackle positions. And for Cradle, he's played center and right guard. So seeing the, the his ability to do both of those things and with the injuries that happened later in the season that on offensive lines, he might get a shot to play or at least be on a practice squad or maybe make, a, maybe make the roster of an NFL team. Yeah, I think I agree with you on – both Slovis and Woods, uh, those guys, like, I think Woods, like Woods could be, I don't know. Woods could be the next Devontae Maddox in my mind. Like a guy who, I mean, he wasn't drafted. Woods was, or uh, excuse me, Maddox was definitely drafted higher, but there is a role for a guy like Woods. If he wants to play slot corner or something like that, I don't think the commanders have a particularly deep group of corners at this point. Um, I know they drafted one last year and Emmanuel Forbes in the first round, but uh, there's always a spot for, you know, shorter, fast. And and then Woods also has a ton of strength too. Like he's not, uh, he's short, but not small. Um, so I think he's got definitely an opportunity to stick with an NFL squad. I agree with you about Slovis. I think he hit on all the right points there. Um, and then Simon, Shane Simon's a guy that I've always been kind of higher on, probably much higher on than basically everyone else. Um, I just think he's pretty athletic. I think he's got versatility as well. He played outside linebacker last year, was a good coverage guy and uh, played some middle linebacker this past year. So um, I really like him. Cradle's an interesting one. You know, I, I had forgotten that he's played a ton of different positions on the offensive line, and teams really love that. I think there's something to, you know, if you have multiple positions, do you really have one? Um, but I think Cradle is a guy who could, you know, stick around and I think make a training camp roster for sure. Um, I, I That's one I hadn't really thought about much, but I, I think that's a that's a good point, that he his versatility is going to really go a long way for him. 
and and looking out a little bit, you know, we've just kind of wrapped up this class, but uh, you know, looking at this 2024 pit team, like you said, a lot of guys returning from a three and nine team, not necessarily the most impressive uh, group of prospects, usually on three and nine teams, but do you see uh, any talent on this pit team currently that you think we might be talking about around this time next year as draftable guys or guys that are getting shots in the NFL? Probably Ryan Jacoby, I would say. I mean, another offensive line. He was pretty solid back in 22. Obviously, last season, suffered a season-ending injury and missed all of 2023. Definitely hurt the pit on the offensive line. He was a missed member for sure. Big guy, has the size you want uh, on the line. I can't imagine he doesn't get a look in. As long as he has a pretty solid 2024 season and is healthy, he's the guy for me that I think has the best shot. And just because Pitt doesn't have necessarily a ton of guys that are out of eligibility, so maybe guys stick around next year. But he's one of those guys where, you know, six-year guy, I think he might have another year because of a medical redshirt again. But I would say he's probably going to be a guy that looks, as long as he performs pretty well next season, we'll have a good shot of a day two or probably a day three um, of the NFL draft in 2025. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Um, you know, I think the the lack of tape certainly does hurt him a little bit. Uh, missing an entire season last year and uh, and everything like that. But he is definitely someone who was talented enough to start. And then, uh, you know, I think Pitt typically does a pretty good job developing their offensive linemen. So I, I don't think there's any reason why Jacoby couldn't have been in that conversation, um, especially if he played this year. And I think a really strong full season this year could help him a lot. I'll stick with the offensive line too. I think Branson Taylor is a guy that, I don't know. We've heard a lot about him this this spring that he's made a ton of improvements and been kind of dominating a little bit. So I think Taylor, another guy with a ton of size, like he's big enough. He's got an NFL body. Um, and I think he played really well last season, too. Um, I think Gavin Bartholomew is another one, a guy who's running out of eligibility. But I mean, that is all contingent upon whether or not he can actually get involved in the offense this year. I don't uh, know if he'd get drafted off of his tape so far this year. I mean, maybe like we talked about with Means, someone says to him, hey, you know, look at these plays. Don't look at, you know, the plays where he's not getting looked at or not, you know, really being involved in the offense. Uh, but that's another guy who I think needs a, a really big season in order to get there. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's thin. And I think not for the reasons like that we talked about. I mean, this last draft class with it was thin for certain reasons. Um, I think Pitt was old in some places and not incredibly talented in those places. I think Pitt has some talent on this team, um, but it's just a little bit younger talent. Um I mean, the only other one I can really think of as kind of a draft eligible guy that I think could go next year is probably Donovan McMillan. I mean, another 100 tackle season. I think he could definitely be in that conversation. Um, but outside of that, I mean, like there are guys who I can project forward to say, yeah, this might be an NFL guy. But I mean, I can't say that about, you know, uh, Rasheem Biles or Jordan Bass or anything like that. Like I like those guys, um, but you kind of need them to actually do it on the field and, uh, before we can make those kinds of evaluations yet. It wasn't just the draft going on this weekend as far as, you know, pit football and everything like that. Uh, the Panthers made an addition of their own, not just losing guys to the draft, but they added a transfer defensive back from Kentucky. Uh, Dom, can you tell us a little bit about who they got and, and uh, where he might fit in on the roster this season? Yeah, they landed Jeremiah Anglin Jr. Um, transfer from, from Kentucky. Uh, he'll have four years of eligibility. Um, Pitt recruited him hard out of high school. Um, he was in their top eight schools, but he obviously chose to go to the Wildcats. But um, yeah, Coach Collins and uh, Coach Sanders will be very, very happy to have him in, the, in their uh, secondary group. I mean, he looks like he'll play corner. I, I can't imagine with how with the way the corner situation is set up at Pitt right now. Obviously, Devonshire Woods and Marquez Williams all graduated, so. You, or well, Devonshire went to the draft, but my point being, they're all gone. So your starting quarterbacks are gone. You need guys that can do it. And obviously, Pitt saw this guy back in high school, and like we like him, and he goes in the transfer portal. They must have thought, like, wow, we can get this guy again. Like, let's get him on the corner slot. I mean, he's also played safety. He is six one, so he could play safety very easily as well. He's always not a shorter corner. A short, like he won't. He would be a short cornerback. He'd be pretty. He'd do pretty well with more of the taller receivers in the ACC. But um, a very good player, and obviously Pitt probably needs a bit better uh, cornerbacks right now. They don't have very much experience there. And if, you know, I'll give it to coach Collins and coach Sanders for looking at guys and either safeties or corners, they can bring in for a bit more experience. So hopefully he does well. I think he's got the talent to be really good, but um, obviously he'll be a bit inexperienced just redshirting last year, not playing at all. Yeah. A former four-star recruit, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yep. Yep. Former four-star guy. I mean, this is basically MJ Devonshire, right? I think all of those things you yeah. said can kind of apply to MJ Devonshire as well. Um, if they can get another MJ Devonshire, I think they'd be incredibly happy, but I, I think you're pretty spot on. 
Uh, you just look at the safety room versus the cornerback room, and I don't think Pitt would have recruited a guy that they didn't think could play our outside corner uh, for them. So you're banking on the talent over the experience. Like you said, there's not a ton of production to grab onto there, but uh, I, I would tell you I don't think any of the corners outside of maybe Rylan Gandy, maybe Noah Biglow, uh, really stood out to me in spring ball, and I don't think the coaches felt much differently. Um, you know, talking to – talking to some of these coaches after the spring game, especially, and it didn't seem like any of the cornerbacks really made a super big impression on them. So uh, I think it's still a position of need for the Panthers. It was before spring ball started and they get another body who can hopefully uh, address that need and maybe be a starting corner for them in 2024. But with that, we're going to head out of here. Thank you all so much for joining us for another inside pit practice report or an inside pit report, excuse me, breaking down the NFL draft. We'll be back with some more content later next week, uh, but appreciate you all tuning into this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash inside the Panthers and follow all of our reporting from the draft and just keep in touch with how the rest of these pit draftees and future pro prospects uh, make out as they get their NFL careers underway at si.com slash college slash Pittsburgh. Appreciate you all tuning in and we'll see you next.